about three or five years ago, I guess the library called me and was trying to book club. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, McNeil, as usual, is doing nothing. Give him a call. And we started a book club. About 10 of us show up. We've been reading books now for three or four years now. And it went well. Then uh, Mr. Nesbitt, Coach Nesbitt, Hall of Fame coach, local coach for 45 years, he and I had coffee about every day at Duncan Dunham. He said, my friend, I'm getting tired of looking at your sorry ass. Give me some different sequel. So yeah. what we simply did is put out the word of the book club. Come on, let's have coffee. The very first meeting was Robin, Bob, John, right, right here. James. And James. And that's what we had. <laughs> and we started out. There were for a four, long time. Four of us at Dunkin' Donuts. And then we kept looking at each other. Come on, let's get some more people. Then we grew to such an extent. We helped with Dunkin' Donuts, as you know. And we went to YMCA. We helped with YMCA. Now we're here on paper, thanks to Robin's efforts. Everybody ever showed up who's been here at least once would have over 100 people. Let's hope that never happens. Right? That never happens right? So, Robin, thank you for doing it. Thank give you yourself it. And don't go anywhere. Okay. Bob, you have a presentation you'd like to give Robin. <laughs> Hey, Bobby, I just want to thank you Aww. for introducing us to hospice Aww. and coppice and all the great things they do Aww. and getting this unruly group semi yeah. under control. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My better judgment, John Wright's going to give you a presentation. So. Okay. Um. So I got involved, um, I started working for hospice six years ago, and part of hospice is we honor veterans, and so we do a pinning ceremony um, to our patients that are veterans that come under our care, and we have volunteers that make red, white, and blue blankets, um, and we do what we call a pinning ceremony, and it's so the whole family comes. And I read, we thank them for their service, and I read a certificate. And in fact, uh, one veteran, he um, had, he could speak English, and he was, um, but he, his first language was Spanish. And so at the end of life, he reverted back to speaking only in Spanish. And so when I was reading him the certificate and thanking him for his service, he sat up in the bed and started singing God Bless America in English. <laughs> And then I've got this, I've got to share this story. This is just, um, so we have a World War II veteran um, that was under our care. And I want to tell people that they think that all the World War II veterans are gone, but they're not. And why is that? Well, because they fibbed about their age and they joined much younger. And so now we're kind of getting that young group that's still coming through that served in World War II. And we don't want them to be forgotten. But the story that he shared, and I actually got to see all these items that I'm going to talk about. He was stationed in Okinawa, and he was told that this was going to be his final um, maneuver, and he probably wasn't going to come back. And so they told him to get all his affairs in order. And so he took silver quarters, and back then in World War II, they were real silver, and he pounded them, and he made a ring, and he made a pendant, and he made a bracelet. And then he took a piece of bamboo and he hollowed it out. And he even made a screw on lid for the top. And then he took a magnifying glass and burned in his fiance's address. I know, I get chills just talking about it. And he sent that all home and she got it. And I actually, his daughter shared that with us and they still have all of that today. Isn't that wonderful? And of course, he didn't have to go. Um, they had, they ended up using the bomb instead. So that was that mission. Okay, so in, um, we have part of our um, group in hospice is to try to reach out to the community to veterans. And we started a veterans cafe. And so I kept trying to have it at Compass, but I was only getting maybe four or five people at a time. 
And I had worked in the past trying to make Compass a five star. That was like the highest honor um, for the NHPCO, the National Hospice and Palliative Care Association. And we ended up not joining again. And so I had more freedom. I kind of before had to follow what their guidelines were. And since we didn't renew our membership with them, I had the freedom to say to Fred, what do you want to do right here in our community in Centerville? And so we started out just like four people at Dunkin' Donuts every Monday at 11 o'clock. And then it grew and it grew and it got so big we had like 20 people. And so we couldn't stay there anymore. And then we went to the YMCA and we grew to over 35. And they said we couldn't stay there anymore because we were too big. And so then the American Legion was kind enough to give us this facility um, every Monday. And they advertise uh, veterans, helping veterans on the marquee out there. And it's just, it's grown.